Hey guys, it's me Haru. So, every once in a while, I'll see someone ask the question, why do people like Spyro 1? And my response to that is, what do you mean? Like, even for me, though I've made it known before that Spyro 1 is my least favorite of the trilogy, all that really means is that I like 2 and 3 more. It doesn't at all mean that I don't love the first game for being an amazing platformer. In fact, I'd recommend anyone who hasn't played it to pick up the Reignited version, since I think it's the definitive way to experience that game specifically. But if you're able to, definitely get the original as well, because I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a certain charm to it. See, when comparing Spyro 1 to its sequels, it almost gets me thinking, why do we like these ones more? With all the minigames and backtracking it added, there's a lot more annoying bits you have to deal with. Why do we gravitate towards things that frustrate us? With Spyro 1, it's pure platforming, and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's a type of uniqueness about it that can't really be explained in words. It's something that you don't just play, you feel. One thing I'll always bring up about the first game in comparison to the others is its soundtrack. The way the tones shift along with the game's atmosphere from happy and upbeat to gloomy and sinister is something that I don't think the sequels capture quite as well. Obviously, it wouldn't be right to say the other soundtracks don't invoke an emotional response, as it's all subjective and heavily nostalgia-based, but Spiral One's music is something special. Now, maybe this is all only apparent to those of us who played it as kids, but personally, I think it has a kind of vibe that wasn't present in 2 or 3. It almost had a threatening sort of aura about it. I've described it this way before. You're a small dragon, alone in a big world where everything is out to get you. You really feel like you're on this great and terrifying adventure. And you're afraid, but you know that Spyro isn't. He's there to toast those enemies and collect the treasure. You put yourself in his position and you know you can do it. His confidence gives you the strength to continue. Spyro 1 is all about discovery. You platform around these lands from grassy fields to floating castles, and aside from the enemies, they may seem barren and devoid of life, but the game uses that space in a way to trick you into thinking the levels are bigger than they really are. But you're never just wandering around with nothing to do. Everything is set up in a way to where it pushes you to explore further. Even Stone Hill, as basic as it may appear, is a fantastic introductory level. From the moment you land, you can choose from multiple paths. Right off the bat, it gives you the option to run straight to the exit warp, or you can take the time to look around, chase down the source of that taunting noise, or search for the key to that chest. How cool is that? It's that non-linearity that I think makes Spyro levels so well-designed in general, but especially in the first game, with its abundance of hidden areas and hard-to-reach dragons. Unlike 2 and 3, where it's all about playing minigames over and over until you get it right, with Spyro 1, you really have to think about each move you make. How do I execute this glide? How do I get to that dragon? Where will this supercharge take me? It's all about the hows and the wheres, and it feels really good to successfully pull off a difficult maneuver. You feel proud of yourself, and you don't get the same sense of accomplishment just by persevering through a bunch of repetitive orb and egg challenges. I mean, don't get me wrong, you still feel relief, but it's not the same. Because of this, there are some people who see Spara 1 as the hardest of all three to complete. I think all of that is what makes it the easiest, because once you get the hang of everything, you can breeze right through most of it. And knowing a game inside and out, to the point where you can go through it so quickly, isn't necessarily a bad thing. I feel, due to the sequels having more to offer in a sense, that's why people remember them more fondly and hold them in higher regard. There's more to do, more characters to talk to, and even play as in Near the Dragon's case. And that can be seen as more memorable in the long run. And this, unfortunately, is what overshadows Spyro 1 and why I think it goes underappreciated by many fans of the series. Yes, it's very straightforward in comparison, but it has its own challenge. And that's what makes it good. And I highly urge anyone who thinks it doesn't hold up to give it another chance. Because it's better than you think. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Let me know your thoughts on Spyro 1 in the comments below. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more casual gaming content, and I will see you next time. Until then, this is Miharu, signing off.